Hey, it's Pauline here and I want to make a quick video about whether or not you should move out to the country and start a ranch or a homestead. As someone who has done it, I'm currently on my five acre ranch. I wanted to share with you the benefits and also the um, cons, the downsides that you might want to consider before investing and moving your family to a new place. So let's just start with the benefits and I'll share my story. Um, I've always kind of had land in my heart. I grew up on an acre and a quarter. A quarter is important. There's extra little bit of land, it matters. <laughs> but anyway, we, after that, when we got married, um, I, every place we lived was really small, really small backyards. And we were this close to purchasing a very expensive downside is bugs. <laughs> you get used to them. Still not entirely used to them, but you get used to them. Anyway, we were about to purchase this really expensive house and it had a backyard that was this big. And I remember like being so excited, like really wanting the house, like praying to God every single day, please let's have this house. And then he changed my mind on it. We were waiting for the bank. It was a property that was not foreclosed, but almost a short sale. So the, their bank had, our bank or whoever had to approve it. And it was taking a while. During that interim, my heart completely flip-flopped. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, I hope it doesn't go through. What would I do with that yard? There's just no room. And I had a two-year-old and a one-year-old at the time. And I'm so glad that God changed my heart on that because we pulled out. I apologized to our realtor and told him we just can't do it. And we waited about six months and then we started looking again. And we started looking for land. I actually had read Little House on the Prairie during the time. And people who have land like to joke about city folk who read Little House on the Prairie and think they can do it. Well, it's a real thing. It really is an inspiring book and it really does make you realize that this life is doable. And I don't think that it's wrong to be inspired by Little House on the Prairie and it was an amazing book. So Yes, I was inspired by Little House in the Prairie, and that's one of the reasons we got this land. And also, you know, I grew up with having an acre, so it probably, you know, was not something that was too scary. But we moved out to the middle of nowhere. Um, it was 30 minutes to the closest grocery store. There used to not even be a gas station for 30 minutes, and so it was a huge leap. My closest neighbor is a quarter mile away. Um, so th those are some of the things that I had to overcome. Now, the upsides. We'll start with the positive. The positive are of those neighbors, I am way closer. You begin to rely on your neighbors. Um, you make the effort to meet them. Great people. I know my few neighbors so much better than I ever knew my neighbors living in the suburbs. We just, everyone keeps their own business usually. You just don't really get to know people that well. So I really love my neighbors out here. Um, life is chill. You can see the stars. There is just nothing around me. Uh, you can. Of course, your children, especially boys, can just run without a, you know, with abandon and just run and experience everything there is to experience. We have orchards and vineyards and a giant garden. We've had all the animals. We've had goats and chickens and ducks and geese and donkeys and plenty of ground squirrels. I don't raise them though. <laughs> um, turkeys. You know, we've done all that. We've slaughtered our animals, which is totally unpleasant and makes it really hard to eat the animals, in my opinion. Really, it makes you appreciate food, I think, when you have to produce it yourself. And of course, being out in nature every single day is just amazing. It's so good for the soul and the spirit. And there's so many wonderful, beautiful things about it. Now, the downsides. And if I think of more upsides, I, I will mention them. But the downsides that maybe you haven't considered um, because it just all sounds so wonderful. But one, if you're like me and you're far, it makes it really hard for the kids to get involved with stuff. So you either spend a ton of time in the car, which is kind of where we're at right now. Um, we just end up listening to a lot of audiobooks, which is very productive. And I listen to a lot of podcasts. And so we make the most of the time. We have amazing conversations. But if you want your kids to be in Awana or get involved with church more than once a week, a uh, 30 minute drive to the closest you know, big city is a long drive. And um, that really has to be considered is the drive. Also grocery shopping. You have to become good at not going to the grocery store for every meal. You really need to plan your meals and buy stuff when you're out. Uh, it can become pretty crazy if you're buying things and you're going shopping, you're going clothes shopping, like, oh, we've got so many things to do and we're in town today, it's church day. And then you're out for like five hours because you're doing everything on the one day you're out in town. So you end up going to town like twice a week and there's like two hours of driving in the middle of the week because you got to drive there and back and then the next day you got to drive there and back so you're not out on one day for five hours. That's a real deal. 
Okay, secondly, we have a five acre ranch and we do hope to expand it. Um, but there is so much upkeep that goes into this. It literally could be a full-time business. You know, it's just something that needs to happen daily. So it, I think the best thing is if you and the kids, especially as they get older, just every day go out and pull weeds or mulch and cover things, um, trim trees, like there is just, and then things break and fall apart and you've got to plant new stuff. If you thought your house in the city was a lot, to take care of um, having a ranch and everything. I'm looking around thinking of it. Everything that goes into that is just a bigger, you know, product of that. Does your property have a well or using city water? We were blessed to have a well and we're blessed to be the only ones on the well. Are you sharing a well? Oh my goodness. I have never heard one good story about people sharing a well. Maybe there are some that exist, but you don't want to share a well. This is your water supply. So I would just like, I wouldn't want to live in a place where there's an HOA. I would not want to live in a place where I had to share a well. I would just keep, I mean, there's so many places where you can get your own well. There's plenty of properties out there. Find a place where you're not sharing a well. Um, and get, if you can, can get a well, that's so ideal. You don't have to deal with chlorinated water anymore. You can have fresh water from the earth. That's amazing. And you also um, don't have to pay for watering all these trees. You're going to have to mulch heavily because you don't want to just, it's electricity, but at least we have a water bill. If you have a water bill, you really have to think about your trees and whatnot. Maybe you have a place that's irrigated, um, but those are all some considerations. Oh, rattlesnakes. That's a thing to think about. Rattlesnakes and whatever wildlife you have. I had to learn to deal with scorpions and rattlesnakes and spiders and bugs and whatnot. There's a lot of bugs out here. Um, not like Oklahoma probably, but more than in the city. Like, no, like I'm... I don't spray, I don't, I'm not into that. So we've got bugs. Um, the rattlesnake, the scorpions I actually got over. Uh, they're not as scary as I thought they were. This is, by the way, eight years living on the ranch. Scorpions are like, oh, they're kind of, whoa, there's a scorpion. And then like, you can squish them really easy, no big deal. But the rattlesnakes still frighten me a little. Like they definitely like make my heart stop for a minute. And I, so I think that, um, that may take another eight years to get over. But you have to know that there is wildlife around you. You may live where there's bears and the trees and forest, who knows? So that's something you have to be ready to deal with. Basketball and football and things are probably not going to be on our list of things that we do. Um, I have a big family and we're far away. But also I just know as another upside that it's a trade, that we're trading for a life of animal husbandry, like my kids know totally how to grow their own food they know how to shoot guns they know how to grow an orchard um, there's just so many incredible things that they've learned that no they're not you know they've never played on a sports team before or been in a ballet class but they have a wealth of other knowledge that's actually useful in life i played college soccer i had a scholarship so i can say um, I pretty much like other than leadership and things that I gained with that there there wasn't a whole ton of benefit I mean I did set an active lifestyle, but honestly the things I really need to learn I didn't I didn't learn um, being on a sports team, so You have to know it's a bit of a trade um, in that regard That's just my personal thoughts and that's another thing too that you want to think about is when you plant your trees Man, I thought of one more thing. Sorry, this is going long, but I want to say this. If you do buy a piece of land, the first thing you do is not go buy chickens like everyone does. You plant your trees. When's the best day to plant a tree? Yesterday. <laughs> and that's because the trees are going to take like three years before they produce fruit. And even then it's not going to be that much. And so they've got to get big before they produce lots of fruit. So if you want to live off the land, plant those trees. The first thing you do. Bear root season is January in Arizona and it might be March or you know, February and March where you live if you're in a colder climate, but get some bare root trees into the ground that's the cheapest way. I can't be more active. And then get your chickens and your animals that take so much time and work. Plant the trees first, get those started, and then deal with the animals because they are a daily consuming task. Don't get roosters. They're crazy and they chase you and want to kill you. Unless they're a Brahma. The Brahmas were nice roosters, but the rest, we've had some battles with the roosters, I'll tell you. They're like kung fu fighters. I hope that was helpful. I hope this video served you and gave you ideas of what you could do and how amazing having a ranch could be, but also the reality of it and knowing, going in full blown, that you're going to have to deal with rattlesnakes. You'll have to deal with daily maintenance. 
but there are so many wonderful things. So share in the comments below. Are you a homesteader? Do you have your own plot of land? Are you considering it? Um, what do you think? Can you, do you think of any other things I forgot, either good or for the bad? Um, let me know your thoughts. And thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.